Obviously, I've got to put a jumper in. It's freezing in the morning. I put a jumper on, and it's literally going to be on for about three minutes. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to another video. And today I'm gonna to share with you something that I've been wrong about. Hold my hands up, I was wrong. Um, but yeah, I'm doing my training session today, which is 90 minutes based on heart rate. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about that in a minute. Um, and yeah, I just want to share some things that I've learned, some things that I think will help you and I think I should probably do this after swim though because I'm a little bit out of breath. So I'm gonna do in about 15 minutes, we've got about another hour and 15 to do. So I'll catch up with you after the session. So that was my session, it was about an hour and a half. I need to shower, so I'll catch up with you after I've had a shower. I'm a little bit less sweaty than I was before. So now I'm gonna to talk to you about why, not necessarily that I was wrong, but I feel like my perspective has changed. And I think this is for, especially for people coming back after injury. So basically it's to do with power and heart rate. So all the time that I've ever trained or like tried to build my fitness, it's always been on training plans linked to power. So all my like interval sessions, all those things are based on power because power is an objective metric. It is physically what you are putting out. Whereas heart rate is a lot more variable and it's, that's more how your body is responding to said power output or said interval. And equally, like I never really bothered with heart rate monitors. I, I kind of used to wear them every so often. If I was on like a Zwift race, for example, you have to have them to kind of prove that what you're putting out is kind of tallying up. Um, and then equally, if I've ever done any like hill climbs where I film them, I know a lot of you are like, wear your heart rate monitor, because I don't ever really bother wearing one. However, I have changed my perspective on heart rate because, I don't know what you know, if you follow me for a while, the last few months, you'll know that I had um, a crash, a pretty bad crash, a guy in front of me, um, this was like two months ago now. God, it's only two months, it feels a lot longer. Anyway, two months ago, he was riding in front of me, he hit a pothole, he went down, then I went down after him. I'm just feeling like so much better. I've been to see the consultant, he's like, you've made like a remarkable recovery. I love that, he's like, you've made a remarkable recovery. So I'm really happy, able to get back riding my bike and starting like very gently my training plan again, because training plans, I'll chat about those in a minute, but training plans, are just so essential if you are wanting to build your fitness. Anyway, so when I got back to it, I was just trying to do like very short, low, like intervals, like way lower than I was doing before just to kind of build me back into it. However, my heart rate was just so high. And I think that is common. It is common for people coming back after, you know, an injury, um, specifically a brain injury. And I just, I, because those sessions felt really hard and I was like, for those watts, for the watts I was doing, I could have done that like all day. Um, but my heart rate was just so high. So it was making that session feel so, so hard. And this has been going on for, well, it's been, I think I've been back doing it about a month now. And my heart rate's just kind of been all over. And just to compare my heart rate before and after and my watts, just so you can, I just love data, so I wanna share the data. So every single month I lead and pace a sub hour effort up Alpha Zwift. So before the crash, this is my, my average watts for that just particular segment were 225 watts and my heart rate was 168 beats per minute. They're just the averages for that. After, however, my average was 182 watts and my average heart rate was 174. So I'm doing 43 less watts, but my heart rate was higher. I wanna actually chat to my coach, Mark, so he can kind of explain what we're doing. Oh, also, heart rate money, I've just got to show you. I've got the Garmin, this is the HR Pro. Really, it was really super comfy. So yeah, why are we training to heart rate rather than, I guess, using power like you would do with everybody else that you train? Well, when you do most of your training indoors, you do yours on the Zwift. Uh, like a lot of people do these days, and therefore you can train to power. Power is only really relevant if you have set your training zones up correctly using standardised tests such as a ramp test or a 20-minute power test, less 
and we haven't done that with you for quite some time. Uh, so your training zones are outdate, outdated for one, uh, so there's no point in training to power using historical uh, FTP numbers because FTP uh, moves around on a daily basis by very small amounts and over weeks and months moves around a lot. What we need to do is stabilise things a little bit, stop that boat from rocking all over the place and uh, just get you riding to heart rate zones and it's predominantly heart rate zone two. The heart rate is starting to to stabilise and I'm looking at the power output, although I'm asking you not to, and power is starting to creep back up again. So uh, it's all starting to return to normal. Still thumbs up, woo woo! <laughs> but I can't stress enough, and this is for anyone that's uh, in a similar position to you, or coming back from a layoff off the bike for from several months, is don't rush these things, you can't rush them. In a nutshell, following a training plan gives you some accountability for your training. But it does help as well having something either down on paper that helps you see what's coming up and plan your week or your day. Set training plans are quite are quite um, quite interesting because people tend to overestimate the amount of time that they have available to train. And when you choose one of those training plans, you've just got to make sure that you choose the correct one that's applicable that you're going to be able to commit to. How nice is Mark? Honestly, he just helped put my mind at ease. This is the thing with heart rate. The more you get stressed about it, the more you're kind of looking at it the more it raises, so I've just been like, calm. Training plans, like, honestly, I've followed training plans for years and I honestly think that that is how, how anyone really is able to build fitness. And it's just like small little things consistently over time. And so Mark sets my training. And how I work that with Zwift is he sets it up in training peaks. And then when you actually go into the training section, if you link training peaks to Zwift, that actually just brings my session up. So it's so, easy and simple to do so that I pretty much train on Zwift and do all my sessions on Zwift even in summer generally because I think it's just so much better for like time efficiency and I just really like riding on Zwift so that's how I do my training and equally if you want a coach I'll leave Mark's details below he's just a really nice guy or on Zwift there are just so many different training plans um, of all different abilities of all like you know depending on how much time you've got each week to dedicate to training and honestly there's just so many if you want if you are coming back to fitness which is what this level up series is all about um, whether you're training for um, an endurance event there's just everything on there go and have a little gander because and I think what Mark says is like being accountable and having that plan laid out massively helps motivation so I think like having a training plan but equally I'm gonna echo what he said in that don't oversubscribe yourself like if you've only got five hours a week or three even three hours a week to train pick a, a training plan that is on how much time you've got because it's way better to do it smaller incrementally over a longer period of time than just being like I'm gonna smash everything in the first two weeks and then just being so burnt out or just you just don't have the time for it anyway I've rambled long enough so thank you so much for watching and again thanks to Zwift for partnering for this level up series which is just trying to encourage any of you that are coming back to fitness that want to achieve your fitness goals this year and I know I've said this a million and one times you're gonna be like Kate shut up but I do love Zwift and it's helped my recovery back into cycling just ugh, I don't know what I would have done without it honestly and I feel like it's gonna help get me back to where I was before quicker so just I love it and also I'm gonna do another live stream in February so you can kind of see that hopefully my heart rate and my fitness coming back after doing a month of training so that's that to look forward to I just embarrass myself on a on the internet again because <laughs> it was so hard going if you've not watched it go back and have a little gander at that because I was just it was so hard it was so so hard but anyway I'm gonna go I'm gonna get some food and I always do that don't I on all my videos I'm like right I'm gonna uh, now finish film I'm just gonna go and eat so that's what I'm gonna do so thank you so much for watching I'll see you on Wednesday for another video in this level up series god I'm chatting a lot see you later is this just me when you have to wet the back of your heart rate monitor? I just lick it. <laughs> is, that, is that really gross? I don't care.